Hey, so I'm doing things a little bit differently today. I am moving in a couple weeks and just like a mile down the road, but still apparently that takes packing. So I'm gonna pack up my cookbooks while I talk to you about something that I've been noticing lately as I've been doing research on YouTube. Because yeah, I do do research on YouTube, even though YouTube isn't my primary medium, the primary way to express myself, my films, my writing, the podcasts that I make, all the stories I tell, that's the way that I really see my artistic expression going. But YouTube, this channel, it means a lot to me. Just talking about my processes is helpful to me in my, in my processes, but also like I, I like sharing what I know in the hopes that I can help other creators who are like me. So in order to make this channel the best I can be, I've been doing research on YouTube. I've been watching other channels about filmmaking and filmmakers. And the one thing that I've noticed is that there are like no women filmmakers on YouTube. I've seen a few cinematographers and there are also some women on writing teaching channels, but for the most part, the women creators who are really empowered to talk about their process are mostly on AuthorTube or on BookTube. They're not talking about films and filmmaking, and I just don't know why that is, because, like, I love all of the videos that I've been watching that are made by these male filmmakers, but at a certain point, hi, my name is... Steve and I'm a 30 year old who has some buddies and we got together and made our own version of Christopher Nolan's The Following, like, there's only so many of those that can really be all that interesting and I want to see different perspectives in film and that's something that I'm really passionate about, bringing different perspectives into my storytelling. I bring my own diversity as a woman, as a Jew, as a Midwesterner, but also I try to incorporate diversity of storytelling. I have characters who are not like me. Expanding definitions of whose stories we tell and why and what's mainstream and just showing people that their stories matter, that they're normal, that they're worthy, that their cultural background, ethnicity, race, gender identity, sexuality, all of these things are, are amazing parts of who they are and their stories are worth telling. That's something that I firmly believe in and as I continue to grow and expand in my career, I want to both represent wider ranges of people, employ diverse cast, diverse crew, but also find ways to produce films from people whose voices are underrepresented. Um, the diverse cast and crew is something that I'm doing, I've done in Interabang, which is releasing. It's my short film comedy anthology. It's on Sika TV. You should check it out. Uh, episode four is releasing this week. It's called Crying, and this is the one that is the favorite of all of the women who have screened it or read the the story, um, read the script. One thing about Crying that I love is that it was in this, shooting this episode, that my DP turned to me during a break. This was our first night of shooting. And he turned to me during a break and he said, Paige, I read the script and it was good. And like, you know, I was, I'm excited to work on this project anyway, but now having seen the actress perform and like knowing what your dialogue is supposed to sound like, I get it and it's awesome. And I'm so psyched to be here. That is, it was like, it was the best compliment. I was like, yes, I uh, thank you for getting it because I've been in a position so often where people didn't quite get what I was getting at. And that diversity of perspective, it's not necessarily about my own diversity as a woman, but being open to different stories and different story ideas and different methods of storytelling, that's something that I think is really important and it kind of, it goes back to why are there no women filmmakers on YouTube and I think it's in part because we think there's a certain way that filmmakers are supposed to be and present themselves as. And to me, working with actors is the best part of directing. I love taking words and making them come to life through helping these super talented, creative individuals find their motivation, find the voice, find the meaning behind the words, find, find the want, the desires of those characters behind the words and really dig in there. And also build relationships between the characters, build a relationship between themselves and the character and help them get into that emotion. But working with actors is not something we talk about when we talk about directing. As Since that's my strength and the thing that I love and the, the real creative part of directing for me is finding ways to make the story come alive and really focus on the story, I think in part that's why I was discouraged from directing for so many years. I, I didn't start directing in earnest until I was in my 30s. 
And part of that is because when I was in college, some dumb boys discouraged me from directing. I was in a group doing a group project and I'd always wanted to be a writer director. And among ourselves, my group mates and I had to decide who was going to be the writer in the group, who was gonna be the director in the group, who was gonna be the cinematographer and who was gonna be the producer. Now the cinematographer and the producer, they both know what they wanted to do and I was cool with that because I understand lenses, white balance, focus, it's, you know, the, le the focal length, all of that, but it's not something that I'm really drawn into. And producing, I am good at it and I love doing it because it enables me to make the films that I want to make. Oh, Gruyere recipe book. It is not the thing that I am super passionate about. But, so the last two jobs available were writer and director. And I wanted to be the director because I knew I could write, but I really wanted to experience directing. And the other guy in my group, he wanted to direct because he was a director. Guess which one of us has made more films? Other members of the group thought the best thing to do was for us to pitch when we were both like, we want to be director, pitch our vision for the film. We went in one by one the, and didn't watch each other's presentation. The guy in our group went in first and he pitched and then I came out and I pitched and I talked about how I saw the story, what the relationships between the characters were, my, my vision for the feeling of the film. Well, the other two members of the group deliberated, we hung out and when they came to their decision, they said, Paige, you're going to be the writer and name redacted you're gonna be the director <laughs> and i asked why and they said well he was talking more about the type of shots he was going to use and the type of lenses and what kind of like and like going out scene by scene sort of storyboarding it because we'd kind of come up with the story already and you were talking just like about what you liked about the story and since you're so story focused that's really just the writer's job so you should just do that and leave him to direct. So from that I got the message that I couldn't really be a director unless I knew a lot about cameras and lenses and shots and cared about that the most and I love the DP on my sets because they know so much about cameras and lenses and the technical aspects and what that's going to do with the shot and so I can explain a feeling that I want to get from the shot we're going to use and my DP can say all right great how about this lens or that lens and I ask what your recommendation is and then they show me two different photos of what it's gonna look like and examples and I choose one and the thing is is that's their job <laughs> that's the job of the DP to know about the lens and the camera and I care about it but what I care about more is the overall vision of the story. The magic of directing is being able to put all of those elements together of production together, oversee departments where everyone is just brilliant at their jobs and then create this like magical land where something that was in somebody's brain and on a page turns into real life. And in order to make it feel real, and you can't do that. You can, you, you need all of these elements, but you can't do it without actors, without performances that are believable and real and from the heart. And a director should understand story and be obsessed with story. And I'm so mad at those boys in my group who told me that I couldn't be a director and be obsessed with story because I, I thought that was true. I thought that, well, I guess I'm really good at story, so I'll just be a writer and I'll leave all the directing to people who have technical know-how, which in our society tends to be assumed that men have technical know-how and men are given more opportunities to learn and assumed to be able to learn more, which isn't fair and it sucks. And I'm glad that eventually I ended up learning that I don't need <laughs> to have all of the technical know-how right now. I have a friend who's a director who's made features that played in South by Southwest have been released by major companies on streaming services that you know, and I'm sure you've actually probably seen these. And he said that his first movie, he didn't know anything about the, the camera and the lenses, and he's slowly learned as he's gotten moved forward. He doesn't know all about lenses. So where are the female filmmakers on YouTube? If you're watching this, I want to see you. I want to see your channel. I want to know what you're about. I want to know where the filmmakers of color are on YouTube because like I've seen Dee for Darius' channel and it's fantastic, but who else? Who else is out there? LGBTQ filmmakers, where are you at? I want to follow you. I want to watch what you're doing. I want to support you. I want to build a collective of underrepresented, awesome filmmakers with stories to tell that share unique perspectives about the world. 
And it doesn't mean that cis straight white guys don't have unique perspectives about the world. It just, we've seen a lot of cis straight white guy perspectives about the world. And so I want to see something different and interesting. And I want to see people who are like me, who are coming up in their career, bragging about what they're doing and sharing what they're doing because community is so important as a filmmaker. So number one, I have a lot of cookbooks. There's even more on the side and I haven't even finished packing them. So I have to do that. Number two, a director is a storyteller. A director is not necessarily a technician. And the best directors are the ones who care about the story, who care about the cast, who care about the people on their crew, and who trust and get input and insight from their department heads and let them tell their, the si their side of the story the best they can possibly. Filmmaking is collaborative. The director is the lead of the production crew, but also like your job as a director isn't to know everything and it's not to know every lens. That's the DP's job. So if you want to know every lens, be a DP. And number three, Tell your stories, be proud of what you're doing. There is absolutely no reason if you're watching this and you are a filmmaker from an underrepresented group whose voice hasn't, don't feel like your voice has been represented. Tell your story, talk about what you're about because I guarantee you the other filmmakers on YouTube, the cis straight white male filmmakers are not necessarily better than you or no better than you. They're just better at being louder and more confident and you deserve that confidence too. So in the comments, let me know if there's anyone I should be following. If you're a filmmaker and you just don't want to be on YouTube, but you want me to check out your work, drop it in and I would love to check it out and like promote you because a rising tide raises all ships. Like we can only get farther if we go together. We get farther if we row together to go on the ships. All right, y'all, I'm going to figure out what to do with all of my cookbooks. I need to make another box because this one is, oh, <laughs> this one's full. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next week here on Cake Fight Presents The Making Of. Ice cream cookbook. <laughs>